Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for all sorts of creators. From graphic design, art and illustration, to productivity and marketing, you can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Over the last five years, I have used Skillshare quite extensively, where I've explored skills that focused on branding and design. But I've also used Skillshare to help me learn about YouTube. And Ali Abdal's class, YouTube for Beginners, is a great place to start. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up using the code RECOLLECTIONROAD0522 will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your own creativity today. Check out the link in the description of this video, and don't forget to use the code RECOLLECTIONROAD0522. In 1987, during Super Bowl XXII, the world met a brand new pop culture icon for Bud Light Beer, named Spuds McKenzie. From the start, the original party animal was the super cool, wealthy, woman-loving bull terrier that was also the face of Bud Light. Not only was he on TV every 30 seconds with a new Bud Light commercial, but his face was put on everything from bumper stickers to t-shirts. Of course, like so many things in the 1980s, he became embroiled in a scandal. After it was discovered, Spuds was actually a female dog. When President Ronald Reagan took office in 1981, he declared a war on drugs. Launched by Nancy Reagan, the Just Say No campaign was one part of the government's effort to reduce drug use by teaching young people how to respond if someone offered them drugs. Just say no, which became an American catchphrase evoking both support and criticism for its emphasis on deterrence tactics rather than drug treatment and substance abuse. The program lasted about a decade, ending in the early 90s. The mullet was a hairstyle worn by both men and women and was one of the most popular ways to cut your hair in the 1980s. Celebrities like Rob Lowe, Patrick Swayze, and Andre Agassi, among many others, loved the business in the front and party in the back look. At the time, this haircut was pure cool, completing a Teen Rebels iconic look. Staying organized at school in the 1980s was easy with the help of the Trapper Keeper. These ultra-cool Velcro binders had everything built into it, like folders, a clipboard, and a pencil bag. It also featured assorted works of art on the cover that made it feel customized to you. Every kid either had one or wanted one, but they fizzled out because the bulky plastic, the thick folders, and the one-inch rings just didn't hold enough schoolwork, so they were traded in for larger binders. Who doesn't remember the bowls of potpourri that were in nearly every household in the 1980s? There were usually multiple potpourri dishes around the house, and for good reason. It smelled great and created a way to colorfully decorate any table. The dried fruits, flower petals, and nuts that made up potpourri were scented with a variety of fragrances, which predated the assortment of air fresheners, sprays, and diffusers that are popular today. Not to mention, this was the go-to present for mom on any occasion. Nylon in the 1980s became a popular material for making tight-fitting pants that were used for breakdancing. These parachute or flight pants were manufactured by many companies, but Bugle Boy may have been the most well-known. The slim-fitting parachute pants of the mid-80s gave way to a more loose and baggy style made for doing the running man dance, just like MC Hammer. Large, portable stereo systems called boomboxes made getting a party started rather easy in the 1980s. These bulky electronic devices not only played music loud, but they could record and play both the radio and cassette tapes. The boombox was a status symbol and a big part of urban culture as breakdancing and hip-hop music was on the rise. 
Eventually, noise complaints would take their toll on the device, but not before the 1989 movie Say Anything ended, with an iconic boombox moment that is still referenced to this day. Well before Amber Alerts notified us of missing children, a dairy company in Iowa began advertising missing children on the back of their milk cartons. This trend grew to other milk producers, and soon missing kids were synonymous with milk cartons. Ultimately, the milk carton campaign made kids eating cereal in the morning fearful, and they didn't do much to bring missing kids home. Eventually, people just stopped paying attention to them, and the campaign ended. One of the promotions that made Kmart, well, Kmart, was their blue light special. The blue police-style light that would alert shoppers of a great deal made the phrase, attention Kmart shoppers, a part of the pop culture lexicon. These blue light specials were being announced at a time in the 80s when Kmart was at the top of the discount store game, but would be discontinued once Walmart surpassed them in sales. The 1980s was all about the action movie, and there was no bigger action star than Arnold Schwarzenegger. During this time, the most well-known bodybuilder in the world made some of the most memorable 80s movies that showed off his muscles. Movies like The Terminator, Conan the Barbarian, The Running Man, Commando, and finally Predator elevated Schwarzenegger into a bona fide movie star over the course of the decade. With so many to choose from, it may be hard to choose your favorite, but there is no doubt Arnold made his mark on 1980s pop culture. There have been many hyped video game accessories over the years, but none have been as fascinating as the Power Glove was for kids across America in 1989. The Nintendo Power Glove was promoted with commercials, and more importantly with the movie The Wizard. This movie had every kid obsessing over Super Mario Brothers, but it introduced the Power Glove and made every kid want it. The only problem was, the few who did get it found it didn't work very well with difficult to use controls. The futuristic glove ended up selling poorly, and it quickly disappeared. Way back in 1981, E.N.J. Gallo, one of the country's largest wineries, introduced Bartles and James wine coolers to America. By the mid-1980s, these glass bottled drinks were being pushed by two fictional porch dwellers named Frank Bartles and Ed James. These two old-timers sold their wine concoctions to consumers a half-century younger than them, and by the time they appeared in a Super Bowl commercial in 1988, Bartles and James was as big as other advertising icons like Spuds McKenzie and the Where's the Beef Lady. By the early 1990s, the wine cooler fad had all but disappeared. If you enjoyed this video, check out the description for links that help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.